Hey, I'm Josh. I'm Ken. This is Ken and Josh Go to the Movies, and today we are reviewing... Sunshine, starring Killian Murphy, Rose Byrne, 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 something, and The Sun. The greatest actor of all. Yes. In this movie today, um, that we're reviewing, Kappa, who the act, scientist played by Killian Murphy, and six other scientists are all on a spaceship. It's on a long... Six, seven other scientists? Perhaps. A bunch of other scientists are on a spaceship going on a long journey towards the sun because the sun is about to burn out and they have to launch a nuclear bomb in the center of the sun that's going to make it go again, which probably won't work, or which probably wouldn't work in real life, yeah. But and there's no way they can actually get that close to the sun. That's not the point of this movie at all. Uh, it's all very metaphorical and the plot is kind of something to hang a lot of other stuff that's going on onto. Here's my thought about this movie is, I enjoy it. I'm going to say that first. But okay. it feels like science fiction's greatest hits. It's a little bit of every great science fiction movie okay. cobbled together. No. Okay, it's, play, it's paying homage to a very specific kind of sci-fi movie. A couple of well, Okay, movies. so let me say, this was made by the same people who make 28 Days Later. Great, great zombie film, in my opinion. Great. One of the greatest of the decade. Um, Danny Boyle, Alex Garland. There's not a lot of competition there. Person who does the score. Um... Yeah, just the whole crew is back, including the main actor, Kelly Murphy. Yeah. Basically, what 28 Days Later was for Night of the Living Dead, this is for Solaris in 2001 and Alien. Event Horizon, even? All, the, mov bit. all the movies where a small group of people are trapped on a spaceship with some sort of mission. Yes. It is that very specific subgenre of sci fi, which, you know, it has been used many times, but yeah. I feel it's a good scenario. Yeah, I just. I feel like I've seen it before, and while I still enjoyed it, it just didn't feel like it was an original I take on this. They're, they're saying slightly different things about human nature, though. Yes, I I, I'm not arguing with that. I'm saying right. the story, basic overarching story, and some of the way it's shot and some of the scenes feel like from other movies. But I think they're direct Themes homages, that, though. Maybe, I don't think. I mean, maybe. they're ripping it off in a pretty clear way to show where they're coming from. Yeah. And yeah, just cool stuff about what it takes to ensure survival and what creates our own humanity and how fragile we are. And Again, I felt like it didn't quite hit that on the head as much as it could have. I felt like Children of Men, which I love, is mm -hmm. a movie that does those same type of things much, much better. I think part of the reason it does it better is because this movie, it's just seven or eight people on a spaceship and they're saying the world's dying, but we don't see that. We don't get that impact, whereas is... in Children of Men, you see the world is gone to crap. I mean... It's almost, it's really hard to compare these movies, you I know. know. And this again, is, I like this movie. I love Children of Men, too, but this is, comparatively, it's less action-packed and more subdued and poetic, and if that's your kind of movie, then you're going to love this, for sure. Until the ending. The Okay, the ending is, yeah, controversial. Uh, possibly the worst part of the movie, but still, doesn't ruin it. I mean... It comes close, because it just feels so out of place. It could have been such a great movie if they just ignored this slasher film aspect that comes along towards the end. We're not going to spoil what happens. But uh, suffice to say, thing you know, things have been proceeding at a, a pace where you can kind of see what's going, and everything makes sense leading into everything else. And then yeah. a left turn comes out of nowhere, and the I plot been, takes a weird turn. I would have been happy if it was just a thoughtful, thinking person's movie. Like the it is for through. the first beginning of the yes, yeah. the first hour of the movie is really smart and fun and great, but then it turns into just like a typical action slasher movie. Though they do have some really cool music going there. The music is just about the best music of last year. I love the music for this movie so much. I, all the, okay, all the design elements. We've got a shout out. The sound design, in addition yes. to the music, and it really bleeds into the music because all the sounds are so musical. And yeah. The visual design, so many cool images. Yeah. The movie Bull that costs so little to make, it looks so amazing. We're about to review Transformers, and I just got to say that the visual design of this movie kicks that movie's ass so, so much on so much smaller of a budget. Not really, but we'll talk about that more in Transformers. And also Danny Boyle's obsessed with eyes. Look for eyes. It's just over and over again in all of his movies. But it's cool. It's just so cool. Yeah. So many cool shots. Good movie. A re really enjoyable movie. Let's check, check it out. Uh, I gave this movie an eye inside of an eye inside of an eye. Because it's trippy and cool looking and thoughtful. I give it three stars. Yeah, it's good. Felt appropriate. Yeah. It's about stars. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of them should have been the sun. Eh. Anyhow. A little too on the nose. 
Anyhow, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm Josh. I'm Ken. This is Ken and Josh Go to the Movies.